Here are some key questions. Can you name the birds that you have in your garden? Why do you think it's important to feed the birds, especially in winter? Good afternoon Primary 2 and welcome to our first afternoon session on science. For our home learning project, what we thought it would be quite good to do is the Big Garden Bird Watch. Now the RSPB's Bird Watch takes place at the end of January from the 29th to the 31st. And what we thought it would be quite good is if you could take part in it as a family and all you would have to do is watch the birds in your garden for one hour. Now before we do that, I thought it would be quite a good idea if we made a bird feeder for your garden. Just to see if you can maybe introduce some new birds to your garden, maybe some different species that you don't already have. And it would maybe make it a little bit easier for you to count the birds that you do see in your garden. Now don't worry, if you don't have a garden or if you don't really like to feed the birds in your garden, you could go for a walk as a family and maybe spot what birds you can see when you're out on a walk. But for those of you that would like to make a bird feeder, I'm going to tell you about some of the ingredients and different things that you would need to make a bird feeder for your garden. I'm also going to go over your learning intention and your success criteria for this afternoon's lesson. Our learning intention for today is that I can help to look after living things. Now our living things this afternoon that we're thinking about are obviously going to be birds. Now I have a lot of birds in my garden because I feed the birds regularly and my boys really enjoy filling up the bird feeders. So what we're going to be thinking about is how we can look after living things. That is our learning intention. Our success criteria. Now I have already mentioned that we're going to be making a bird feeder. We've got to do lots of different things to make a bird feeder and it involves different ingredients. So what we're going to have to do or what I'm looking for is that you can follow the instructions in this video. Very similar to a cook school that I would have done during the last lockdown, you're going to have to follow some of the simple instructions to actually be able to make a bird feeder. Some of the skills that you will be using as we're doing that will be that you can measure ingredients and it's up to you. You can use a measuring spoon or you can use a set of scales. I'm also looking for you being able to use your knife skills. Now we're going to add an apple to our uh, bird feeder. You don't need to do that. But if you want to, I'm going to show you how to go over your chopping skills, in particular your bridge cut for chopping a chunk of an apple and also your claw grip. So we're going to be going over that today as we're doing our cutting. We're also going to be mixing our ingredients today. So that is going to be our final skill in our success criteria is that you can mix different ingredients together. Now I am planning to have my boys do this with me this afternoon so Edward and Joseph are going to join me and help me to make a bird feeder because I think this is an activity that will be really nice for you to do as a family and if you do decide to take part in the big garden bird watch then you'll be able to do your bird watch together. So what we're going to do is we're going to get started on making our bird feeders. What I'm going to do is I'm going to list the ingredients and I'm going to show you the ingredients that you will need to make a bird feeder. What I would also like to say primary to is that this is an optional activity. Please do not feel that you're getting stressed out having to go and buy ingredients. Obviously we're, we're not going to the shops as often as we normally would and also it's not important to go and buy ingredients for a bird feeder. Please do not get yourself stressed out about making a bird feeder. This is an optional activity. If you have feeders in your garden or if you want to just put some bread out for the birds, you will find that you will still get lots of birds that will come to your garden just to eat the bread that you put out. You will need some fat, like lard. We added sunflower seeds. We added a mix of dried fruit and nuts. We also added some dried mealworm. And lastly, some chopped apple. Okay, primary two, I have got my boys with me. Who have we got? Joseph. We've got Joseph. Edward. And Edward. So we are going to make a bird feeder, but before we make a bird feeder, boys, can you tell my class and Miss Beatty's class, what birds do we have in our garden already? Jackdaws. Jackdaws. Jackdaws, yeah, we've got jackdaws. And what do jackdaws look like, Joseph? Yeah, what do jackdaws look like? What colour are jackdaws? Mm. 
black and they're black and they've got a grey head. A jackdaw is very similar to a crow. It's just slightly smaller than a crow and it's black. Edward, can you think of any birds we've got in the garden? And um, we have robin. We do. Black. Um, yeah, what else? Two. Blackbirds. Blackbirds. And what are the little birds, boys, that we always have nesting in our nest box? Baby. They are babies. We've got chicks. But Check. what colour are they? They are? Blue. Blue. Do you remember the name of the bird? They're blue tits. Every okay. year we have got a video camera birdhouse and we have got little blue tits that nest in there every year. And we like watching them, don't we? <laughs> now, another question. Why is it important that we feed birds during the winter? <laughs> Joseph, why do you think it's important that we feed birds during the winter? Because they die. They might die. Why do you think they would die, Edward, if they didn't get fed? What is there not as much of in the garden? Like bugs and... In the summertime, there's lots of bugs and flies and caterpillars that the birds can eat. But at this time of year, there's not as many bugs and berries and different things for them to eat. So we like to feed the birds in our garden regularly so that we know that they're not going to go hungry. I'm going to show you the ingredients that we're going to put in our bird feeder today. So our first one is fat. Now we are using lard. So there's our first one, lard. Our next ingredient is nuts and raisins. Now, nuts and raisins. Nuts and raisins. So lots of birds like nuts and raisins. Wood pigeons in particular are actually vegetarian, so they only eat nuts and seeds. Blackbirds like fruits and berries, so I'm going to put some raisins in my bird feeder today. Also in our bird feeder, now this is optional, these are called mealworm. So these are the little dried worms and in particular robins, mealworms. So in particular robins and other birds, ducks and different things. Yeah, they're like little dry worms. These are very high in protein, which are great for birds during winter. And the fat is obviously very important to give them a lot of energy to keep them warm during winter. The next ingredient that we have, and the little birds in particular, the blue tits and the chaffinches, the, yeah, chaffinches enjoy the sunflower seeds. And the good thing about sunflower seeds, not at this mm. time of year, but certainly in the summer, if some sunflower seeds don't get eaten and they land in your garden, they will grow into sunflowers. We had some wonderful sunflowers one year from underneath our bird feeder. So we're going to add some sunflower seeds. And the last ingredient that we're going to add is actually an apple. Now, I already mentioned that blackbirds really enjoy apples. If you were to just put an apple outside and uh, as a whole apple or hang it on a, on a hook or anything that you've maybe got in your garden, you would find that a lot of birds would actually I eat the apple, apple during winter because they're hungry. We are going to use all of the ingredients here to make a couple of bird feeders to put in our garden. So to avoid any arguments, I have put a lump of fat into two bowls, one for Edward and one for Joseph. Now, what I'm going to let the boys do is measure some ingredients. If you want to use a set of scales for your measuring skills, you can. But what my boys are going to do is we're going to use tablespoons. And I'm going to... Yeah, a tablespoon. Oh, no. Yeah. And what my boys are going to do is they're going to add two tablespoons of each of the ingredients into their lump of fat before they start mixing it. Fat! Into the lump of fat. Yes. Now, you can fat. use your hands yeah. for this. Not yet. But not yet. Not if yet. you're mashing up your fat, you will need to wash your hands after you have mashed up my lump of fat out of the fridge overnight so it's nice and soft. And the boys are going to add two tablespoons of each ingredient into their bowl. We mashed the lard using our hands. Can I have one? Yeah, Edward's going to put two tablespoonfuls in. One. Oops. That's okay. Two. With my hands. Why are you mixing it with your hands? Because we found out that it's a bit easier. And it's easier to mix with your hands. Well done. Okay, what I have done is I have set aside all of our ingredients that we've already mixed 
and I've put them on the floor so that we're not touching them at the minute. The next thing that we're going to add, Joseph, is apple. an apple. Now, I have got one of these little um, corer gadgets from Ikea. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to place it on the top and I'm going to just get our apple into small sections to make it easier for the boys to use their cutting skills. So if you have one of them, brilliant. Edward used the claw grip to cut his apple. And I'm going to put the apple little chopped up in, in my bowl. Okay, on you go. Put big handfuls in, Edward. Put half of the apple that's there into your bowl. Well done. Then the next thing Edward's going to do is he's going to take some mealworm, which are in the bowl, and he's also right going to add them into his fat mix. On you go, Edward. One more hand then. Yeah. Well done. And the last thing Edward's going to do is mix all of those ingredients together, but not too much because he doesn't want to break up all the mealworm. Okay, that is our finished bird cake, as Edward likes to call it. That is all of the ingredients that we have put together to make our bird feeder. I'm going to set that to one side and Edward and I are just going to show you the different things that we can put our bird food in. Like I said, we feed birds a lot in our garden. We've got a cage feeder and what you'll do is you'll just make your bird and your bird fat into little balls and you can put it into the cage okay, feeder. So, like I said, we've had our cage feeder. The other option that we had is this. A coconut. Yeah, this is actually an old bird feeder that we had in the back garden and the birds have long eaten the, the fat out of the middle of this one. So Edward's going to fill the empty coconut, the half the coconut shell with our bird fat. And then the last one. We have this wee yogurt tub yeah. with a wee string in it. So you can easily make this at home. I made a hole in the bottom with a sharp knife. Mum or Dad might need to do that for you. I then attach some string through it and Edward is going to fill that pot up with bird feet and then it will hang from a tree in our garden. We're going to do that now. Obviously Joseph's left, but Edward and I would just like to say thank you very much for taking part in our bird feeder activity. If you do make a bird feeder, please feel free to post some pictures of it. We love to see them and we're looking forward to seeing what birds we have in our garden yeah. through all of our feeders. So lots of food for our birds in the garden and we will keep you posted on what birds we get for the big garden bird watch. Thank you everyone. Bye. Bye.